Hi guys, Andrew the At Home Marketer here, and in today's video we'll be doing a quick tutorial on Try Interact's advanced features. For those of you not familiar with Interact, it is a quiz maker software that allows you to generate leads for your business through the use of the quizzes, polls, and giveaways. Uh, I did do a beginner video on Interact, which I will link up above. So if you are just getting started with the software, I do recommend you check that out uh, as it is a great place to start. Now for now those, for those of, you of you that are, are a bit more advanced, advanced and have been introduced, introduced to Interact, Interact, in this, in this video, video I will, I will be, going be going over how to, how to install, install conversion, conversion tracking, tracking as well as, well as, as integrating with your email, email software, software and, and I will also touch, touch on branching, branching logic, logic quizzes. quizzes. So, so with that, that in mind, mind let's, let's just hop right in. in. Uh, I, do uh, I do already have, already a, have quiz a quiz here that is set up, set up so, so I will just, I will just jump jumping in into this. this. So inside the actual quiz editing itself, uh, if you remember from my last video, this specific quiz is a scored quiz, which means that as people answer these questions, they will assign a point for each answer, and based on what they answer, they will be put into one of these buckets. Uh, which are ranges of scores as the result. So the first thing that I want to do if I am using this quiz to generate leads for my business is I want to install conversion tracking. Uh, this will allow me to track my results both on Facebook and on Google. So I will be going up here to edit here under conversion tracking and clicking on this. Uh, the first thing that you want to do is install your Facebook pixel. Uh, it's a very easy process. All you have to do is go and copy and paste your pixel ID. Uh, I will not be using a real ID, so I'll just enter some numbers here. Uh, once you have your ID pasted, you want to select the actual quiz events that you want to uh, track. So what I like to do is just select all of them. Uh, you know, anyone that goes through an opt-in through the opt-in form is considered a quiz lead. Uh, they're also considered a lead if they hit the results page. So depending on if you have the opt-in filled um, set up or not, either way they will be a lead if they hit the results page. Uh, and then I also want to have quiz results, quiz start, uh, and quiz view. Uh, some of these are the actual specific answers. So depending on what your answers are, that's what these will be. You can change these as a custom event. I do recommend turning on these custom events as they can be very helpful as you're analyzing your Facebook data. Uh, in the next video, I will actually be going over how to set up and scale a lead campaign on Facebook, uh, and these will play a crucial part in that. So I will turn these on uh, for the sake of this video. Uh, the next part is standard events. So those were custom events that would trigger. Uh, you can also trigger a standard event for each result that comes up. Uh, I obviously like to trigger the lead result because that is what we're collecting here. So I will turn that on for all of them. Uh, if there is only one result that you actually want to track a lead for, so if you're guiding people through the quiz and there is one result in particular that you're looking for to track as a lead, that is when you can only turn that one on and then leave the rest of them off. So that the only thing that tracks in Facebook as a lead is someone going through the quiz and answering the with the correct response that you're looking for. Uh, so I will save these. Some advanced features, uh, I just leave these both checked for the way they are. Uh, and then Google Analytics tracking. This is a bit funky. I have seen it work and I also have seen it not work great. Um, but what you do is you go and you find your Google Analytics tracking ID, which is in the property that you have set up. Uh, when you are setting up the property, you want to make sure that you are using interact.com as the actual domain uh, to track that. So that will be what the URL is in that property. I will just enter something random here again. I uh, don't even know if it's the right amount of numbers. Uh, and then this will automatically track events within your Google. So you will see events such as view, start, lead, result. Sometimes the lead one doesn't come through, so it is not perfect. Uh, but this would be how you would track your results on Google as well. Moving down here into conversion tracking, there is some stuff here with GDPR. Uh, I do not worry about that as much as I'm not familiar with the actual concepts, but you can check these if you would like, and it is just another way uh, to be compliant on multiple platforms. Uh, and then once all this is done, I will save settings uh, and move on to set up my email opt-in. 
So to set up the email opt-in, I simply come up here and switch this from off to on, uh, which will take me to this form where I can start customizing my opt-in form as well as hooking this up to whatever email software I will be using. Uh, so on the opt-in form itself, uh, you can create several different fields. Obviously, first name and email are the main things that you want to track. But if you want to add phone number or anything else, you can add them in here. You can also add custom fields. Uh, these work great. Uh, the one downside of these is that they are a little bit harder to actually connect with your email software. Uh, so these are pretty general to match up. These ones, if you get too specific, you might have to troubleshoot some things there. Although Zapier is always your friend for this, so you can always go through Zapier and actually connect these custom fields through to uh, whatever you are putting them into your third-party software. Uh, down here, this is pretty crucial. I usually uncheck this. Basically what this does is it allows people to skip the opt-in if they would like. So when this is checked, down here you can see that they can simply skip the opt-in form uh, and go right to their result versus turning it off and actually needing them to fill out the form. Uh, so just so you are aware, the opt-in form comes right after the last quiz question, right before the result is served to them. Again, a couple other checkboxes here. You can have a privacy policy if you'd like, uh, and then the GDPR compliant consent checkbox, which also requires the skip opt-in form to be checked. Down here, this is the opt-in form. You have some ability to customize it. Uh, again, these are the actual fields, so these you would change up above. Uh, and down here, this is the title. In general, what we like to do is we like to say your results are on their way, and then we like to bribe them somehow. So if you have, you know, a lead magnet of some sort, this is where you would offer it, uh, and anything to get them to give you their name and email, because again, uh, customers are always very hesitant when they have to start giving out information. So the way that we get around this is we offer them more value than they are receiving. So again, some great things, a free ebook, uh, maybe a bonus in terms of how much value they'll receive. Uh, sometimes it is even good to put how much it is. So free ebook. And again, these can be arbitrary, but if it is worth $97, then you'll put $97 value. Uh, just a small marketing tactic there. You don't need to do that, but we do find that it does help conversion rate. Uh, and down here, again, you can also put that, um, you know, value addition in here, or you can just say, you know, we won't spam you, something along those lines. So now that the opt-in form is set up, we are ready to actually go to the next step. So I will save and continue here. And this is where you will select the email marketing program that you want to connect. So I selected MailChimp as the integration that I wanted to connect. Uh, when you select MailChimp, it will take you actually to your MailChimp login. And all you have to do is simply log into your account and it will be connected. Uh, some of the other softwares do require a bit of uh, API integration. So you'll just need to take the API key from one and share it with the other and then you can move forward. Uh, they do offer instructions for each different software based on what you're selecting. So don't be intimidated, uh, you know, just go and find the one that you have, read the instructions, and it's very simple. Uh, so once that is set up, you can actually go here to start editing things on your results. And this is where it gets really interesting because it's where you can start customizing your quiz. So this is where you can actually add a tag based on what they're answering on the question. So if you do want to add that information into your email software and record that they answered Facebook for this first one, let's say, you would simply go here to add an action. Uh, you would need to select the list again, but then you would add the tag to that specific contact. So when they're added to your contacts, they would come in with that tag for that answer. Moving forward, uh, you can also include a double opt-in. So I do not want this because that is just another barrier to entry for these leads. Uh, it is a way to screen them a step further and gauge their interest. So some of you may want to include this. You do not have to, though. Uh, and then moving forward, this is where you will actually match the field to where it is sending it in your email software. So obviously the email address in Interact, you want to match with the email by default. And then quiz score value, I do not necessarily want this. Uh, you can pull some other things. So uh, some softwares allow you to actually pull the name. It looks like MailChimp does not. Uh, so that is a downfall of MailChimp. 
uh, but this is where you would actually match the field from Interact to the field within your email software. Once you have matched the fields, you're good to go. So it'll show that it is connected. You can test the integration and send a lead through to make sure that it is working. Uh, and then once that is all said and done, your email software is finally integrated. Uh, so I will not be saving this as this is just a test version. But moving on, the next thing that I want to cover is actually the branching logic of a quiz. So this is a bit more of an advanced feature, but it does come in handy uh, in several different scenarios. So when you go into the branching logic, you will get an actual explanation video. I do recommend you watch this, even though I'm going to show you some things real quickly here. Uh, this will cover this more in depth. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just show you how to get started. All your questions will be over here and all of your results will be over here. So you're going to pull a question over here into the start um, and then you will connect the start to the first question uh, and then this is where you can get advanced. So uh, all of the answers to this first question are down here. Again you can see the value that they are scored but if you want the next question to be hinged on to be dependent on whatever you answered for this question, this is where you would actually match that up with. So you would take that next question in line for the quiz down here, uh, and let's say anyone that answered YouTube, um, you want to go to that, anyone that answered Google, you want to go to that, um, but anyone that actually answered Twitter and on Facebook, you want to go to this question, that is where you would actually move this over here, and now anyone that selects one of these, will be served this question next in logical order. Uh, again, with results, what you can do is have different results down here. So not only are the results based on the actual score, but you can actually have an order of them flowing through. So anyone that scores Twitter on this will go to this result. Uh, anyone that scores YouTube on this will go to this result. Uh, and that's just the basics of it. There's a ton of cool stuff you can do with this, especially in terms of um, you know, having different results that go to different places. So as you know, in the results state section, you can actually have a call to action with a URL. So what you want to do is guide people through your quiz to the specific result that you want them to see. Uh, and then from there, you can send them to a specific URL with your product or your business, uh, whatever you are advertising within the quiz. Finally, the last feature that I want to show you within Try Interact is their analytics for the quiz. So depending on what quiz you are looking at, you can go over here in the right column and select analytics uh, and this will show you all of the data under your quiz. Uh, so it will give you an overview if it's your first time. Uh, I would recommend watching this. As you can see, the funnel is laid out with views, starts, completions, and then leads. So someone that completed it, and then someone that actually filled out the opt-in form and made it to the results page. Uh, in general, you will see some drop-off here at each stage, but this gives you a great overall breakdown of how the quiz is performing. Uh, in general, we're seeing conversion rates of anywhere from 20 to 50 percent. Uh, it really depends on how involved and how interactive your questions are. Um, so just breaking it down here, this is where views are, starts, completions, leads. It will give you your conversion rate as well as any sharing features down here. All of your leads will be listed down here as well. Uh, and then it will show you who made it to which result. Um, some ways to improve the conversion rate on your quiz. Uh, you can actually go over here to questions and answers. And what this will do is it will show you how many people answered each specific question. So if there is a logjam in your quiz, you'll be able to see it here because the engagement rate on this specific question will be very, very low. Uh, so you'll want to look at either taking it out of your quiz completely or changing it up to be a bit more um, you know, receptive uh, to the audience answering it so that they will engage with it at a higher rate. Uh, quizzes are a great tool if you can make sure that people are going through them. Uh, I know there's a lot of information you want to collect from them, but really the end goal of the quiz is to gather the name and email as a lead. So with that in mind, you want to keep the quizzes somewhat easy because people do have limited attention spans. Uh, over here, again, just some other features. You can look at the leads again. Uh, you can see the results. It gives a better picture, uh, as well as showing who actually clicked the call to action button for each result. 
So if you're getting leads through to a specific result, and that result has a specific URL, you can see how many of those people actually click through to that URL. Uh, finally, under advanced, uh, this just shows you your conversion rate over time. So this is a good overall map of how your quiz is performing. If you if you make any major changes, I would recommend uh, looking over them in here to see how they affect the conversion rate over a longer period of time. So those are all of the advanced features within Try Interact, the quiz software maker. Uh, as always, if you have any questions on anything covered in this video, uh, feel free to leave a comment, and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Uh, you know, standard YouTube stuff, like this video, give this channel a subscribe if you are enjoying the content that I am bringing to you. Uh, if there are any videos or tutorials that you want to see, again, let me know in the comments. Uh, but if not, I hope you guys have a great day, and I'll talk to you guys in the next video.